Hey guys, Vincent here, and these are German Barnet and Sword Knots. So I recently bought some new swords and those sword and bayonet knots came with them. Since I didn't know much about them I started to do a bit of research and decided to produce a short video. Sword knots or Faustriemen in German are small bands which were originally used to connect the saber to the hand of the soldier. This was done to secure the weapon and even if the soldier dropped its saber it would still hang from his hand and was not lost. Over the years this practical tool would also become a bit of a decorative item, mostly to indicate the wearer's battalion, squadron or company number. The Prussians used these sword knots at least since the reign of Frederick Wilhelm I, also known as the Soldier King. He writes in 1734, The strength of the cavalry relies on having a good sword. One should also fix a leather sling to the weapon with a tassel at the end to differentiate the companies. The binder knot originated from the sword knot, but its purpose was never to secure the bayonet to the hand, since the bayonet was obviously fixed to the end of the rifle and not the hand. The binder knot was always a way for the Prussian soldier to proudly present his company number. While the sword knot sling was made out of leather, the binder knot features a sling made from cloth. While the word Faustriemen really just means sword knot, the binder knot was called a troddel. For the Prussians and every other soldier of the 18 and 1900s, a bayonet or sword knot was an integral part of the weapon itself and no uniform or battle gear was complete without these. You will see these sword or bayonet knots in nearly 100% of the period pictures of German soldiers. Officers had their own sword knots called porte pace which look a bit different since they don't feature an open tassel, but rather a closed acorn style of decoration. There will be a video about the Prussian infantry officer's sword coming this year, and then I will talk about the officer's porte pay as well. To start, here is a picture with the terms I'm going to use. The interesting part of the bayonet or sword knots for us are the slide, the stem, which is only present on the bayonet knot, the crown, and the tassel. The underlying concept of how to read those knots is really simple. Basically each color indicates a specific number. White stands for 1, red for 2, yellow for 3 and blue for the number 4. On Prussian and German bayonet knots the stem always shows you the battalion number while the slide and crown tells you the company number. So for the first battalion the bayonet knot would look something like this. A white stem combined with a colored slide and crown for the different companies. White slide and crown for the first company, red slide and crown for the second, and so on. The same idea is applied to the second battalion, but now with a red stem. Please note here that the company numbers don't start again with the first company, even though we're in the second battalion, but they continue with the company number 5, then 6, 7 and 8. For the 3rd battalion the stem was yellow and now we have the company numbers from 9 to 12. These bayonet knots were used nearly in every formation on foot, so regular infantry, foot artillery, pioneers and so on. The only example were the Jäger battalions. These guys used a completely dark green bayonet knot which looked the same for every company. Now let's move over to the sword knots. It is basically the same system, but this time without any battalion number, since the cuirassiers, the dragoons and the ulan regiments only had 5 squadrons. The only color changing part here is the crown. White for the first, red for the second, yellow for the third, blue for the fourth and the only new thing, green for squadron number 5. And just like with the Jäger battalions, there is also one exception when it comes to sword knots. And this time it's the knot for the hussars and the trained battalions. They had these all black, all leather sword knots for every squadron. And now since you all know how to identify the different companies and squadrons, we can go over my two examples here. 
My bayonet knot features a white stem together with a white sliding crown, so it fits perfectly to this S9805, which was used by the Pony Battalion No. 4, 1st Company. My sword knot, on the other hand, shows a yellow crown and therefore matches with my cavalry sword 89, which is unit marked the 1st Guard Dragoons, 3rd Squadron. Now for the last part of the video we will go over all the different variants on how to bind these bayonet and sword knots the right way. I won't give you a detailed instruction but rather show you a couple of pictures for each weapon and those should give you a pretty good idea on how to bind those sword knots. When it comes to bayonets there was actually only one way used to bind the knot to the bayonet frog. Keep in mind that this is only true for the enlisted men Officers or privately purchased dress bayonets could have their bayonet knots bound in many different ways. For the swords, there is one way basically for each model. The cavalry sword 89 can be a bit tricky and requires a pretty soft and flexible leather sling. If you can't bind the sling the right way, I think it's better to just leave them off the sword than to further damage an original sling which is at least 100 years old. The sword knots on the cuirassier swords all work the same way for all the five models. Here is my Prussian model 1854, a weapon that was captured by the Prussians during the Franco-Prussian War. The sword knots for the Sabre 1852 is also very easy to bind. As mine is marked to the 8th Hussars, it features the sword knot for Hussars and train battalions. The last group of sabers are those with a single bar hilt. Most famously the Blücher Saber and all of the artillery sabers and the Ulan Saber 1873 as shown here in the video. I again use the Hussar sword knot because it's the most flexible one I have. And here is also a picture showing how these knots would have been used in combat. Simply unwind the decorative way the sword knot is bound, then move the slide back, stick your hand through the loop and bring the slide back again tightening the loop around your arm. Now the saber is strapped onto your hand and it can't get lost. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned some new things. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments or send me an email. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but I will see you guys in the next video.